Yesterday, I talked about lots of places I'd visited, um, but I didn't talk yet about Wales. And that is because just in a couple of weeks, I'm going off on a grand tour of Wales where I'm going to be visiting some of the local parties and hoping to return there later on as well to visit some of the other local parties. So my main political message this morning is get your dogs ready if you live in Wales because uh, I'm very want to see them. Um, we've talked a lot about the general election in 2024, but of course we know getting four MPs in 2024, just to repeat that first thing in the morning, um, is not the end of the political journey. We need to continue and keep making things happen. And part of that is absolutely making sure we win more seats or seats in the Senate in 2026. It is absolutely time that Wales has green representation. A much better place to talk about that Welsh green representation, who better than the leader of the Wales Green Party. Please welcome to the stage, Anthony Slaughter. Bora Dach and Heidlis. Good morning, conference. Greetings from Wales. Just reflecting, it's 10 years since my first conference, Green Party Conference, and that was here in Brighton. And I think it's fair to say it was a life-changing experience. So I just wanted to extend a warm welcome to those of you who are experiencing your first conference this weekend, and I'm very definitely positively sure you'll be having such a great experience like I did. But be careful of what you say yes to. <laughs> so we're in Brighton. I'm going to copy, follow on from others, but I've got a message on behalf of Wales Green Party for one of your most local active members, our outgoing Green MP, Caroline Lucas. <laughs> Caroline, your work and service for our party, your constituents, and for the progressive political movement across the board has been truly inspirational. You have led the way in showing how to do politics differently and be the change we want to see. Your ongoing friendship and support for our party in Wales and your constant engagement with our campaigns, election campaigns, has been truly invaluable and very, very much appreciated. Diolch galan, Caroline, thank you very much. <laughs> now, conference, anyone watching the recent Conservative Conference Circus with its endless parade of ministers proudly parading their cruelty and their incompetence. It is impossible to understate the scale of the crisis we are facing because of these clowns. Not helped by a situation where Labour have gone missing in action. They seem to stand for nothing apart from mindlessly parroting Tory lies. We understand these crises, these multiple crises facing our communities the climate crisis, the economy, the cost of living crisis, the energy crisis. These are hitting the most poorest, most vulnerable in our communities the hardest, both here locally and globally. And we as Greens, we understand how these issues are interconnected. We are the only party that grasps this, has joined up policy, joined up thinking to tackle these serious crises that are tearing our communities apart. That is why it is so, so important that we get increased green elected representation at every level across our two nations. And we need to make that change at pace, not incrementally. We need to ramp up our ambition, the scale of our operations, and what we're doing to increase that elected green representation. If not now, when? And conference, the time is now. When this cruel and tired Conservative Party face up to reality and call the general election that the UK so desperately needs, we are poised and ready to significantly increase our green representation at Westminster with the next generation, quadrupling our number of MPs at Westminster. Caroline's constituency, constituents here in Brighton will be welcoming their new Green MP, Sean Berry. <laughs> who will be joined by Carla Denya, Adam Adrian Ramsey, and Ellie Chowns, our fantastic four for 24. <laughs> and in Wales, we will be running our most ambitious, our biggest and boldest general election campaign to date. 
we will be standing a full slate across Wales and we will get our highest ever vote share in Wales, leading the way to our successful breakthrough, our historic breakthrough, as Zach has alluded to, which will come in 2026, when we get Greens elected to the Senate. <laughs> Greens in the Senate will deliver true opposition, holding the government to genuine scrutiny, helping to lead Wales to being that greener, fairer place we know it can be. The new electoral system that's coming into place for future Senate elections is our opportunity. It puts the Greens within touching distance of having real influence in the Welsh Parliament. We can win seats in the Senate, and we will win seats in the Senate. And our ambition for Wales doesn't end there. Building on that success from that Senate campaign, election success, we go straight into 2027, our next round of local authority elections, where we aim to get councillors elected on all 22 local authorities in Wales. Yeah. They will join that group of Green councillors who made that historic breakthrough for us last year. And the hard work that they have put into their communities, the way they are delivering for their communities, is showing Green voters the value of voting Green, what you get when you elect Greens. So to that group of councillors, I just want to say from the party, from myself, a heartfelt thanks for all you are doing. <laughs> the political landscape in Wales is shifting. It's an interesting one. Undoubtedly, devolution has enabled the Welsh Government to be slightly bolder than its Westminster counterparts. The Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, for instance, is one example. But for so often in Wales, implementation doesn't match ambition. We have a political elite in Cardiff Bay who are good at warm words, but this is why we need that Welsh voice in the Senate, holding, holding to account, making sure they deliver. And in some ways, in many ways, you could argue that devolution has been a failure. And I say that as someone who supports more devolution and independence. But after 24 years of a Labour, a Labour government in Wales, we have some of the starkest inequalities across the UK, the highest poverty levels, one in three children in Wales living in real poverty. We have fuel poverty coming up, winter coming up, 60% of our population at least live in the very real fear of fuel poverty. The housing crisis in Wales is acute and is impacting communities across the nation. And on the environment, the recent State of Nature report highlighted the fact that Wales is one of the most nature-depleted nations on these islands. Wales deserves better. <laughs> and those areas where devolution has been a success and delivered are under severe challenge, are very, very much at risk from the over-centralising, power-hungry Westminster government. The post-Brexit pushback the Internal Markets Bill, the Shared Prosperity Fund, attacks on devolution that undermine all efforts to defend environmental standards, protect workers' white rights. Westminster is holding Wales back. <laughs> and that, that is why we as Wales Green Party believe that independence for Wales is a vital step towards creating that fairer, greener, more equal society we all want. And I, I am proud that Wales Green Party have become an integral part of that growing movement across Wales, working towards that goal. But for us, Wales Green Party, independence isn't just about flag waving and anthems. Although, to be fair, talking about flags, we do have pretty much one of the coolest ones going. <laughs> Wales Green Party vision of an independent Wales is about devolving power to communities, enabling communities to take control of their life, creating that equal society we want to see in Wales. An independence that means merely shifting the power, Westminster power base to Cardiff Bay isn't an independence that I would campaign for. Independence is meaningless if you can't afford a safe, secure, warm home. Independence is meaningless if we 
without radical reform of institutionally racist public bodies. Independence is meaningless if society continues to tolerate transphobia, homophobia, and all other bigotries. I'm going to say something that sounds slightly familiar now. Independence is meaningless without climate justice, social justice, <laughs> economic justice, and racial justice. <laughs> now, I was going to lead on, wind up by quoting a very famous Welsh thinker and writer. But in the nature, I don't know if it's uh, along the lines of great minds thinking alike, or it's our... <laughs> Our green love of recycling, the sack beat me to it yesterday. <laughs> I'm, of course, talking about Raymond Williams. And I did think this morning, can I find another quote? And I thought, you know what? That quote's so good, it won't hurt conference to hear it twice. <laughs> to be truly radical is to make hope possible rather than despair convincing. And that is what we do as Greens. Our radical vision is the way forward towards creating that future of hope, a world of equality, planets, a safe planet, and warm homes for all. All of these things, we know our radical vision will deliver these vital, vital issues. This is why it is so important, to go back to what I said earlier, that we work and increase our level of elected Greens across every level of government in these two nations. And I'm confident we will do that, starting, as we've said, next year, 24, when we elect those fantastic four MPs to Westminster. <laughs> and we will see councillor numbers increase across England and Wales, and we will see Greens in the Senate conference. We can do this, we will do this, and we must do this. Thank you.